Hey guys, this is Whiskey Untitled. Um, today we'll be uh, interviewing Lisa, aka the Cocktail Maven, on Instagram. And um, yeah, so enjoy the show. And here's the intro. Hey guys, it's Charles. Hey. Drink Man, and this is this is not Wally. No, it's a it's a it's a beautiful woman over there. Well, did not change. Not again. Wally. <laughs> And that's uh, Lisa, <laughs> aka the Cockeye Maven. Um, yeah, and this is Drinking Caveman. And uh, basically, we're just interviewing her, seeing you know what she does, the shows that she does, the uh, the website that she does as well. So can't wait to uh, talk to her about it. So uh, first off, uh, Lisa, if you don't know, uh, since this is a drinking show, what is in your glass today? Since you're the guest. Ah, oh, what is in my glass? Yes. I am drinking a tobacco smoked old fashioned. Ooh, that's fancy, man. Yeah, yes. we don't we don't do that crazy tobacco, but um, is it? I know this is my house. This is my house old fashioned. Can you see how amazing the ice is? Perfectly clear I, ice. I didn't even know there was ice in there, unless you told me. That's see, awesome. see, that's exactly. This is like this is this is cocktail like level nine stuff here. So tobacco smoked glass. It's Russell's Reserve Tenure for the bourbon, yep. homemade orange bitters, and demerara syrup. So, it's one of if you, if you come to the Cocktail Maven's Casa, this is what you will likely be served. Yeah, that's upgraded to what we do. Ooh. Um. So <laughs> I'm guessing you get tobacco, smoke it yourself, a little fire, torch that in there, and then uh, work your magic. Absolutely. Yep. I uh, picked out a tobacco out of North Carolina. It's called Rare Gem. It's like really, really sweet and really oily. I tell everybody it smells like my uh, grandfather's pipe. My grandfather didn't smoke, but if he did, that's what I think the pipe would smell like. Super sweet and super oily, so it really sticks to the glass. Mm -hmm. So the drink doesn't taste like tobacco, but every every note you get on the nose gets a beautiful tobacco note right there with the bourbon. That's awesome. To be honest, that's one thing I do like about, you know, just having some bourbons that taste like tobacco smoked tobacco or at least a bit of leather to kind of get you that old earthy feel and then now you're exactly. adding that it's awesome and uh quick question with your ice do you make it yourself like kind of get one of those big tubs and cut them yourself or do you have like ice trays or I do a couple different ways. Yeah. So I will just use an ice chest and do directional freezing. So take the lid off, freeze it in the freezer and, and do it that way. Um, the easiest way though, I'm a huge fan of Winter Smith's ice maker. They have a clear ice maker that's you just like wintersmiths.com is the website and you fill it with water it and it makes clear ice. Wintersmith. Yeah. Okay. As far as the economy ice game goes, which is the, I don't want to spend three grand making my ice. Yeah. Uh, I, they have the best product from my perspective. Yeah, no, I've been seeing can, those like clear ice ball machines and they're like in the thousands already. And I'm like, really? They're Do ridiculous. You need one of those yep. for... Yeah. No, but you see how pretty it is. You don't need like a three grand no, one, crazy. but hey, you want to look at that beautiful uh, juice in there? Yeah, you, look, you know, you little, you know, orange peel. Is it orange peel or lemon peel? Can't really uh, this orange one's peel. an orange peel, yeah. and I actually um, toasted the orange peel as well because it changes the the flavor notes on it. So yeah, I'll be in the cocktail game, hence the cocktail maybe. I know. Uh, so for me, a... you probably know this. It's called the Godfather Amaretto with some bourbon. So my bourbon of choice today is Four Roses Single Barrel. So nice, sweet on sweet. Um, I was like, you know, cocktail maven's probably gonna bump out a nice, amazing cocktail. I'll, I'll try <laughs> and do something that I like. Really good. So I was like, nice. I see you. You bring you're up in your game tonight. Just a, just That's a good. Tad, right? Nothing fancy. It's just a glass. Anyone can do it. Okay. You don't even need ice. There's, so. <laughs> no excuses is what yeah. you're saying. No excuses. No, so uh, whiskey watch. This is a uh, Canadian um, bourbon. Oh no, Canadian bourbon. Canadian whiskey glass. I think that's what's called. I do love that cradle glass. That's beautiful. Yeah, uh, Canadian whiskey glass. That's all it is. So it does look like a cradle glass, except the cradle glass is what more rounded on the bottom, right? So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know why Canadians need their own glass, but it is what it is, right? So it's probably friendlier. It says hello. How are you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How are you yeah. doing? So, um, if people don't know, you're the cocktail maven on Instagram. Um, yes. You take a bunch of amazing pictures. You go out, go out into the world, take amazing cocktail photos and stuff, and even give your cocktails out to people to try and stuff. Um, what got you started in that game? Like what made you go like, okay, I needed to show Instagram, uh, put on Instagram. I need to show people what I do. Tell us how it started. Yeah. God, I would love to tell you that there's this amazing, like romantic story that it was so well thought out and the brand was built so carefully. It was legitimately an accident. Like so many other things. Um, I have 
a whole, whole bunch of social media between Twitter and Facebook and Instagram over the years and realized that my passion for cocktails was growing and I was posting a lot of photos of alcohol. And I come from a non-drinking family with a lot of children that were connected to my uh, Instagram and my Facebook pages. And at some point people were starting to ask me if I was an alcoholic <laughs> and yep. a poor influence on children. And so I thought, fine, 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 fine. I'll give my booze love a completely its own Instagram page. So Cocktail Maven was born just so that I had a place to start talking about cocktails. And I decided immediately I would friend nobody that I knew in my real life gotcha. so that my new cocktail life would be completely separate and nobody would have any idea who Cocktail Maven yeah. was. And that's how we, it, it grew from there. That passion of as soon as I had an outlet for it, then it was obsessive, making my own bitters, making my own cocktails, photographing everything everywhere I go. Uh, so it became from an accident. It just sort of grew into an obsession and later into a podcast. Yeah, so that, that's kind of what happened with me, too. I had to have my personal page. It started getting traction. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably not the best thing to say everybody to my workforce that, yes, I drink a lot. Here's some po- photos. So, uh, yes. uh, I, I did the exact same thing as you. I was like, yeah, I need an outlet for it. Move it onto a different page and then started growing that again. So I'm glad that see another person was like, yeah, it's like you sent, you know, people do pictures of their kid. And I'm like, no, I do pictures of whiskey. Sure. Here's your kid upgraded to whiskey. So. No, it's awesome. Exactly. And then you did mention that um, you have a podcast. So, yeah, um, do you tell us about it? Tell the name, everything, how it start, and who you – Absolutely. Talk. So I met another um, another whiskey lover on Instagram, and uh, we were both podcasting on a different network uh, and got our start there and decided we wanted to do a girls' show together, something different that people weren't doing already. So we focused on alcohol and adulting. There's, there's a whole ton of great whiskey shows out there. People really focus on just bourbon or just whiskey or some set of those. And we wanted our show to be fun and silly and edgy and sexy and at times ridiculous. And so we came up with a concept for the luscious life. And it's myself and Alicia, who actually lives um, outside of Louisville, Kentucky. She's in the industry. She's a bourbon expert. Uh, my expertise is in cocktails. And we have a weekly show that is um, a bit, at times, ridiculous. But we try to combine education and fun and alcohol, all kinds of alcohol. We like to consider ourselves no alcohol left behind kind of girls, although whiskey will always have our heart. Um, the show ranges from um, fun stuff to to sort of uh, crazy stuff at times. So what do you mean by adulting? Like we got the whiskey stuff, but what do you mean by adulting? Like do you guys give advice to people or is it more like, hey, don't drink too much or what's the... So we try to do everything adulting. Um, funny story, when we first kicked the show off, I got an instant message from someone that said, oh my God, I can't believe that you are having a show on adultery. Like who talks about this? This is this is horrific. How can you have a show on adultery? And I was like, whoa, 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 time out. Adultery is not the same thing as adulting. Yeah, so adulting. Like, I, yeah, I know. They're I know. like, this is horrific. <laughs> they thought I was going, I don't know, they thought I was going to relationship yeah. jail or something. So I said, no, 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 not adultery. Yeah. Um, adulting, if you don't know, is just simply the act of being an adult. So for us, that's a wide variety of things. We have shows on how to cure a hangover. We have shows on uh, how to sneak booze into places and still be a responsible adult, how to make it to work, how to pregame so you can go all night and not get a hangover. Awesome. Um, gifts that you can buy other adult friends how to know you're adulting well. It's a whole range of things, but all sorts of adult topics. And obviously sex is kind of an adult topic. While we don't nail that one like direct on, it kind of ends up being part of almost every show because, hey, we're adults, so we can talk about these things. That's kind of true. Like like when you think about podcasts and stuff like that, everyone's trying to be PG, but like you're talking about alcohol. You know, your audience is going to be 21 plus, so... Oh, yes, it, it needs to be 21 plus. And, and then we even say 21 plus not for the faint of heart. It's definitely not a show for people who can't handle some edgy topics let's yeah. say no fair enough and that's why it's kind of funny when people go like just say hey, we're talking about alcohol that's it booze and then we don't want to talk about the other stuff that happens or we're in the bars how do you sneak how do you sneak booze in? i think it would be the perfect episode right like just <laughs> yeah. hey i'm bored i'm at a children's party how do i just kind of go in the bathroom real quick and take a little swig so that's yes awesome. and we've got some great great tips on our adventures yes I've snuck booze into non-drinking funerals before because who needs a drink more worse than somebody who's mourning? Yeah, I thought you were going to be about to say church. I'm like, oh, well, maybe the priest, pastor, maybe a bit weird. But yeah, funerals. Oh, it was a church. Yeah. It was totally a church. I'm, in my head, I'm like, oh, okay. But I can see a funeral. I'll be like, yeah, you don't want to be happy. You don't want to be, well, depends on what kind of drinker you are, right? You don't want to be the guy's crying in the river, too. <laughs> so. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, if you have not when you have non-drinking people, you you've got to support. You got to support those in the brotherhood of drinkers. Yeah, you say your family's not non-drinker, so I'm assuming most people you know are probably not tenth. Yeah. From the other life that doesn't know, I have a podcast yeah. and an Instagram, that, and I say terrible things. That is kind of funny because, like, yeah, when I was growing up, like my my now mother-in-law, like her one of her first gifts for me was a flask. Like that's when I knew, like, yeah, maybe I do have a drinking problem. She's like, I don't know you too well. <laughs> I think you have an here, amazing mother-in-law. Is what I think. Here's a flask for you. So I'm like. With my, with my name on it too i was like wow this is legit i'm like all right fair enough that like warms my and heart I'm like, looking, I'm like yeah i don't drink too much what are you talking about and everyone walks into my place that's, they see this room that's just wallpaper that's not even legit it's real lovely. whiskey what are you talking about this is whiskey wallpaper yeah. uh it's a green screen guys if you never thought you know i'm, I'm a fake it's what are you talking about i take pictures of these <laughs> bottles um so yeah, so you guys got that, um, you got a podcast and it comes out every Monday, right? Is, is that still correct? That's right. Every Monday. So yeah, guys, check it out. Um, podcasts are found like Apple and podcasts and everywhere, right? Yeah, we got iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Libsyn. It's pretty much anywhere. And it's Luscious, L-U-S-H, like Lush, and then us, U-S, Luscious Life. Yeah. And then, um, so since you do all your cocktail kind of stuff and then you go to events, like I see on your um your Instagram live stream or is it live stream or is it um, stories, right? I mean, yep. stories. Yeah. So like I always see the feet, like what made you start doing that? Cause I thought it was pretty cool. Like every time I see it, I just see your feet <laughs> walking and then what are you doing today? Or like, like a- this carpet sucks. Like, so how that started? It was out? a joke. Um, it was a joke because somebody posted a picture of walking. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody in Phoenix, apartment bartender, and then someone in London, amateur mixologist like copied him. And so as a joke, two dudes i like copied two dudes and posted a picture walking and but it was kind of a hit like people really liked it and so then i started picking up some um foot fetish followers and so i have a lot of people that really like the videos and uh and so that was it just became a thing and now i try to i've started adding music to it and doing videos and basically it's just legitimately me walking wherever it is i'm going every day i just take a 15 second video of me walking and some smart ass comments. If you saw today's, I was like being a smart ass about the snow, even though there's absolutely no snow in Phoenix. You know, I, to be honest, I think that's kind of like one of the, the things now I see you as is like the person that walks and she has like things come up. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I think I even messaged you like, hey, how do you edit this stuff? Because I was like, yeah, what app are you I, using? I, I get I a lot of that. that like, but I'm like, smart idea. Well, and I have like a regular corporate job. So I legitimately have about three minutes to get that video taken, get in the building, get it fully edited and get it posted before I'm into 12 hours of meetings. So it has to be a pretty nimble video app. And I pretty much have to know what music I'm going to put like attach yeah. to it before I even get started. Cause you have to edit the perfect 15 second yeah. clip, right? I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even know there was music in there. Cause I listen to my in- Instagram, like all off, right. Unless it has a sound thing, then I click it. I gotta start doing that now. Damn. You missing the best you gotta, part, you, buddy? You gotta, you gotta put the sound, the sound icon. You got, you got, Oh, I guess I can I'm do like, that. In my head, I'm like, oh, that's cool. She's walking. I'm like, where's she going this time? And then it's like, you know, smart ass comment. So. Oh, man. I didn't even think about putting the. All right. I'll put the sound icon on. Awesome. I get a lot of comments on the music. So I think most people are listening to it because I have everything on there from like opera to silliness to, you know, heavy metal to country. Like, I, I just, it's pretty diverse. Whatever I feel like that day. Yeah, no. If you guys haven't checked out Cocktail Maven, check her stories out. It's, it's kind of, it's fun to see. Like, because every day, I think it's almost every day, right? It's different. Pretty much every so day. I definitely yeah. like the ones when you're in hotels because they're like, I think I recognize that hotel. I'm like, oh, yeah, it does have ugly ass <laughs> carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, hotel carpet looks like you vomited all over the floor. I'm sure it's to hide stains. Yeah. But what I realized, there is nothing worse with a hangover than looking at hotel carpet while you walk. Talk about the spin. So, when, so you're, are you just like, uh, when you take pictures of it, are you just holding it there and then walking? Or is it kind of like, oh, top down view? Or is it like you kind of getting close? Or Yeah, I'm totally like, I just hold the phone. And I'm very covert about it so that people don't even know that uh, I'm videoing because it's against the rules at work yep. to have a phone in your hand while you walk. So I have to totally pretend I'm not videoing all the time. So I can totally covert video anything. I'm very good yeah, at it I was now. Like, did you take this all the time or did you save this and then you're posting it? So you're actually doing it on the fly. Literally on the fly. Yeah. And if I'm like walking into a meeting, then I'll like go one minute early, do a 15 second video, edit it quickly, get it posted. Right, and then I, hey. 
<laughs> then head into the meeting. A couple times I've had to like pop in an earphone really quick just to make sure that I could edit my audio while I, you know, before the meeting starts. But, but yeah. it's hard to have, you know, two lives, one that pays the bills and one that you like to have yeah. fun with. No, that's great though. Like I, I really think that's kind of like staple of your uh, Instagram channel now. So I, I think that's awesome. Especially like I love shoes, so it came out of an obsession for shoes. I just there you go. love shoes, shoes and booze. There you go. And the question I get asked all the time yep. is, "What is your most expensive thing that you've got? Have you are, are your shoes more expensive or your booze more expensive?" Ooh. So I will tell right. you, I'm crazy. I'm a crazy bargain shopper. Okay. So hands down, like booze. booze is way more expensive than shoes. I may have 150 pairs of shoes or some random number yeah. of shoes. Um, I have way more bottles on that too, but yeah, always I, my booze is worth way more than my shoes. See, that's a funny thing for me. It's the opposite. Your shoes are worth more than your booze. Oh, like I have, I had a pair of shoes come that are more expensive than bottles I have here. How come I don't see your walking videos? I don't know. I've been thinking about doing not walking video, but like photos <laughs> with, with my shoes. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, Stick a bottle of booze in your I shoes. Know, right? I, I did it once with a collectible shoe I had. And I have, I have a few, like, so this whiskey room, if you tilt it here, it has, like, a bunch of shoes. Or here has a bunch of shoes. So. But, yeah. No, uh, that, maybe I, maybe I should. Maybe I'll be, like, cocktail me and be, like, welcome. Hey, somebody followed me. Boom. Hey, Anthony Weech. How you doing? Um, so, talk oh. about that. So, with the, the stuff that you do with, like, uh, bars and stuff, like, do you get invited? Is it more, like... Oh, I know these bars in the areas that I'm in since you travel a lot, right? For for work, mm -hmm. do you seek out these bars? What's what's kind of like the thing that you go like? Okay, I'm moving to a new city. What do you do to make you know your amazing Instagram photos and um, content? So before I, I do a lot of travel for um, the day yep. job. So before I head to cities, I try to connect and do as much research as I can. And the social media communities that we're part of are amazing. Um, the Whiskey Fabric mm -hmm. community especially is phenomenal. So I just reach out in advance to a few people I know in different cities and say, where are my like must go places? And I'm always looking for the most experimental, crazy out like no other places. That's always what I'm looking for. And I've just been amazed at what people are willing to share with me. So that's generally what I do. I reach out and I get a lot of invites as well. So that that's helpful, yep. you know, where people invite me to come take photos of their stuff and, you know, try their cocktails kind of thing. So that's generally what I do before I reach out and then getting a chance to just meet people who love what I love, hook up at a bar, people fly into Phoenix yep. and get to meet somebody for a drink that maybe I only know on Instagram. That happens fairly often. That's and cool. I just think that's one of the coolest things about this community is all the amazing people who share my passion. Yep. And then, so when you go to, um, let's say a new cocktail bar, do you have a go-to cocktail to see if this bar is legit or you just kind of be like, Hey bartender, what, what's your recommendation? It depends on the bar, yep. but a Generally, I actually go through the menu and try to find the wildest, craziest combination of things that seem like they wouldn't go together. So you just go off the deep end. You're like, right, I want this weird thing. And then if it's good, then I'll try something normal. It's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to, I love creativity. Yeah. And I think that people, bartenders who can express themselves that way. I mean, sometimes I just talk to the bartender too and say, if there's nothing on the menu that strikes my fancy, I'll go, Hey, what do you got off menu? What are you working on that you want to try as a guinea pig yeah. on somebody? Or what's the new bottle that you just got in that you're not quite sure what you want to do with. So it really depends on the situation, but I try to feel out the bartender a little bit in advance. Yeah, so when I, when I do go to bars, it's more like, Hey, what's your house special? What do you, what's the bartender do? So I had one time when I was in Germany, the guy did a, um, a zombie and I was like, I never had one before. Try it out. Mm -hmm. Killed me. Like it was, it was amazing <laughs> when it went down, but yeah, the night I don't remember. Hence the zombie. But like, yeah, that's kind of why I go. I was like, Hey, what do you guys like? Or what do you do? And then I didn't realize a lot of bartenders and some people may know this. I, I didn't at the time. Like they're working on, like you said, they're working on new products. They're working on new cocktails to add to their list for next month or next year or to yeah. propose. And then they need guinea pigs just because they don't need yes people. They want like, hey, what do I have to change in this stuff? So, yeah, it's kind of actually a really great way to get free drinks Ooh, I didn't even be think about because that. they will they will generally not charge you for the things that they're trying to work on experimentally. If you give them really really good feedback. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I won't have to pay for the drinks at the bar either just because they'll say, man, I just appreciate the feedback yeah. or, you know, what if I make this for you again? And I, I'm a, I'm a huge drinker. I, I mean, I drink a lot. I have a high tolerance for alcohol, but I will easily hit six bars in the night, which means I can't finish every cocktail. Yeah. So I, I'll taste a few, taste a few drinks and then, you know, move on to the next one. Fair enough. No, then that, that's really interesting. I never knew that. Yeah, you could probably get comp drinks from that way. 
Pro tip. And you got to make a relationship with somebody, yeah. right? Like you can't just walk in and be like, I want free drinks, yeah. but you get in there and you start talking to them. And I think you demonstrate a little bit of knowledge and appreciation for their art and their craft. They're much more willing to engage you in a conversation. So like you mentioned before, um, your house specialty was your old fashioned, right? The smoked old fashioned. <laughs> What's another, like, um, let's say I'm new into cocktails. What would you make them that they see as a typical cocktail, like not a whiskey based, so it's not like an old fashioned, but let's say I'm going to your house. Hey, cocktail maven, I heard you're great on Instagram. You do all these things. What's the one cocktail you're showing? Like, I'm going to wow you with this. I always ask a series of questions because the answer is never the same person to person, right? And so I say, I mean, start out with what's your base spirit? What's your favorite spirit to drink in a cocktail? And if they sheepishly look at me and go, vodka? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go vodka. Let's go. Right. I'm like, okay, probably going to have to put some fruit juice in it. So here's what I do to vodka drinkers. Yep. Vodka, there is no difference between vodka and gin from a base spirit standpoint. Gin is merely infused vodka. Okay. So somebody's taken botanicals and put it into vodka. But most people who say they hate gin are afraid of the juniper part yep. of it. But gins can have a beautiful range of flavors, just like whiskeys. And they can come in a citrus. They can come all these different flavors. So I will often make a cocktail for someone and substitute gin for vodka and not tell them. Ooh, okay. That's all right. A bit sneaky there, but okay. I got gotcha. you. A little sneaky yeah. because I think that what my favorite thing is, is opening someone's mind to something new. Yeah. People who hate whiskey cocktails, yeah. people who hate whiskey, I'll find a way to incorporate whiskey. I, I love to incorporate the flavors that people think that they don't like okay. because maybe they didn't have a good one. Um, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to test you there. Right. So okay. Wally and me, we're not big Pete fans. I think you know that, right? Okay. So mm-hmm. how would you get us to drink Pete? Okay. Here's how I would right, do right. it. This we're is how ready. I do it. With everybody. Everyone listen. Cause we're going to sneak this into uh, Wally's drink. Let's do it. So it's really, really easy, actually. What I have found is that people who don't like the taste of peat still love the smell. Okay. So the smell of peat is actually really beautiful, even if you don't like the taste of it. So what I will do is take a glass and use, um, my favorite is Lagavulin 16, but any any anything that's heavily peated will work. Put it in a little spritzer and just spritz the inside of that glass. I have a cocktail that I'll make. I have several cocktails, actually, but one of my favorites is called Luck Be a Lady. It is a whiskey-based cocktail. Pour that into the glass over a big ice rock and put one spritz again across the top of that. So when you hand it to somebody, the nose is a beautiful, beautiful smoke, but the palate is not. Gotcha. So your palate is a nice whiskey cocktail. It's a little bit sweet. It's got a whole bunch of other flavors in it as well. And you get this really great cocktail, but what you're doing is adapting the olfactory system, Mm -hmm. the nose to peat, to adjust it. And then your sense of smell is stronger than your sense of taste. So over time, um, because the olfactory system is actually a nostalgic system Mm -hmm. and it has a memory, you've associated in a very positive way, this smokiness, this peat with this beautiful cocktail. And it actually doesn't take very long for people to start saying, I don't, maybe I don't hate peat so much. They might not want to drink it straight right off, but most people will start taking little pieces of it and kind of liking it better. Gotcha. So that's my like sneaky way of so you, um, getting people. And you in. call that luck be lady. Is that right? Luck be a lady. It's one of my design cocktails. It's actually designed to go with cigars because okay. I'm a huge cigar smoker, gotcha. but um, yeah, it's a great and way to do it. Ha- so if you guys don't know, she has a website. Is that on your website? It All is. Right, so um, yep, we're going to on... link that on the comments below. We're, I think yep. me and know Wally will try that out. We'll see. So I guess I actually have like a little, fuser spritzer thing will be so nice oh i'll be excited to see what happens i have several cocktails that i do that with just a little spritz of lagavulin 16 over the top of it and you just start to get that smell on the nose yeah it gets to where like some peats like so um i had the highland park full of volume which has a little bit of peat in there and the highland park kind of stuff so it wasn't that bad but once you get to like the arbeg tens the lafroy mm-hmm. that's when it gets a bit too much for me so i'm like right. i want to get in i want to be in that world i want to be in your world of where the peats amazing at the point i'm like uh, i'm looking at ashtray so yeah, yeah <laughs> right past that i know somebody asked the question is rum a good choice and i and rum's a great choice for for introduction cocktail too just because most people have had it and it's very tropical Do you have any uh, rum recommendations i know we'll, we'll link one in the website if you uh on our comments if you want is there any rum specialties that you have that are like you have to trust uh, try this if you're a rum aficionado um, no, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm a huge, like a rum aficionado. I mostly use Ronza Kappa 23 okay. in my bar because it's a very versatile rum. It's a little bit higher end. Um, but I, I like that. I actually like spice drums as well in moderation. Like 
you can get spice drums and be very cloyingly sweet, and they really shouldn't be. They shouldn't have sugar content. So you can get a good spice drum that just has nice spice on it. So yeah. So um, if someone goes to your website, so what are they going to like? Let's let's push people to your website, right? So what are the type of things that are going to be on there that people can enjoy and engage in? For the most part, the the website is drink recipes. Ooh, okay. So yep, that's pretty much that's pretty much what exactly what's on the blog. My podcast is also up there, so it's linked to my podcast. But it's drink recipes to all of the different things I come up with. There is an article on prohibition as well on repeal day. So sometimes there's articles, but for the most part, it's just recipes of trying to push people to try things that they haven't tried. I have a tequila based old fashioned as well okay, that that's people tell me I've never had. I, I have a hundred percent like on this this old fashioned and not everyone likes tequila, but it's so smooth. And anytime you put a top, a top shelf spirit in a cocktail, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's just going to make the drink. I, I'm not a person who subscribes to crappy booze and hides it in a cocktail that I wouldn't put anything in a cocktail. I wouldn't drink straight. Ooh, uh, well that's true though. But then again, like, so I know Wally put, has put the um, Booker's Rye in a cocktail and I got really mad at him for that. So totally get it now i'm not saying that there aren't spirits i would prefer to drink yeah. neat but i won't take something that i don't like neat and put it in a cocktail so whiskey watch is asking like it's just, actually okay. asking what uh, what tequila do you use for your thing or do you have so a base? in in my oaxacan uh in my oaxacan old-fashioned it's a mix of mezcal and reposado and i like the avion reposado uh in that one and then the montalobos joven mezcal as the mezcal and it's a three to one that's that recipe's on my website as well but it's a, it's a nice mix. Two to one if you really like things smoky. Three to one if you don't like things real smoky. Look at that. So you even got portion sizes together. You are the cocktail maven. That's awesome. Got all I know, head. right? Um, so, yeah, uh, guys, please feel free to toss in questions uh, in the chat. You know, want to get to know her more, too. So um, what else do you do um, besides you got the blog? Yeah, you got the blog. You got the Instagram mm-hmm. podcast. Like anything else coming up next year or anything you guys are trying to work on or? Sure. I actually do um, education events too. So when people are coming into Phoenix for like um, maybe a business trip or whatever, people will reach out and I'll do education events. If you've been on my Instagram, you know that smoke is my jam. I have this ridiculous obsession with smoke. So smoked cocktails, cigars, smoked foods, whatever it is, for whatever reason, I'm just completely addicted to smoke. So I have cocktail classes that I teach and one of them is actually a a cocktail class is how to sort of incorporate smoke into drinks. Whether you're smoking the glass or you're using a smoky, like a peated whiskey mm-hmm. or a mezcal. So teach classes. Uh, I do events like Arizona Cocktail Week is coming up in February. Yep. So I am hosting, uh, I'm emceeing a private event. Awesome. So it's kind of a, yeah, a mix of stuff like that. I do, I work for some marketing firms. Well, I wouldn't say I work, but um, sure. I do some writing for, for some firms as well. So it's, cool. a, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Whatever whatever lets me pursue my passion yeah, awesome. is pretty much what and I then do. You mentioned like smoke and stuff. So- Cigars is a big thing for you, right? I, I think I've seen that for you. Yes, I love so, cigars. Uh, I'm not a big cigar, like maybe when I was younger, but like I'm not a really big cigar person, but let, help me out, right? What would be the one cigar that I have to try that'd be perfect for my whiskey obsession, right? So, is, is I mean, hard? I think as a whiskey yeah. lo- as a whiskey lover, you know that the answer is what's, I mean, it's the same kind of question. Yep. What's the one whiskey I'm going to love if I've never had whiskey before, right? Or I don't love whiskey. It's totally, yeah. totally palate dependent. Mm-hmm. Usually, um, all the cigar experts that I've talked mm-hmm. to say start mild. Okay. Men, the, interestingly enough, I didn't know this fact. Men prefer to start with mild cigars, so there's a lot of great, more mild ones out there. Women generally prefer to start with medium to bold cigars, mm-hmm. which I actually thought it would oh, be right. the exact opposite. Okay. But that's what most of the experts say. So when you go into a good cigar shop, you just ask for something. Hey, I'm a new cigar smoker. I'd like to try something that's mild, palatable for someone new. And if you love a whiskey and you want to have it with a whiskey, you say, I want to have it with a Del Mar c- um, Delmore Cigar Mall. Yeah, gotcha. Tell them. Yeah. I, I mean, a lot of these guys will know how to pair it. Not everybody, but a lot of them will know how to pair it with, with a rum or with a whiskey, and and let them be the guide. A great, um, a great tobacconist is going to be your guide, just like a you know a great whiskey enthusiast awesome. would be. Yeah. Sadly, I don't see a lot of um, cigar places around here, but I definitely got to search. I definitely because I I I do feel I'm missing out on some of them because people are like, oh my god, this thing's perfect with a cigar and stuff like. I'm like. I don't know. The whiskey was okay. And, uh, if you, and I'm like, I feel bad. If you make it to Phoenix one of these days, I will treat you. I'll make sure that you have the right cocktails to pair with the right cigars. Yeah, and, and that's that's the thing, right? You're trying to build that atmosphere. Like, you, for me, like it's a leather chair, not you know, not too bright area with maybe a, <laughs> a mild cigar, like you mentioned, and either a nice right. cocktail or a smooth whiskey. Like that's kind of like the 
epicenter of like, okay, this is where I'm going to relax, enjoy good company. And I think that's what we're, we're all trying to build. Like, that's the reason why I built this room, this whiskey room here, is just to be able to sit down, relax, and then just change my thoughts and then kind of just enjoy the moment, the whiskey. Absolutely. And you've been on my page enough to know that while I love that surrounding mm-hmm. environment, mine is probably going to be in my pool with a fire, with a cocktail and a cigar. See, like, who does that, right? Like, So, so <laughs> I sometimes I look at their feet and like she's in the pool. I'm like, how are you in the pool? Because I just saw you with a whiskey and a cigar and then there's a fireplace behind you? Like... Yeah, I, it, there's a there's a decent chance that when I built that pool, it was legitimately built for the sole purpose of smoking cigars and drinking whiskey next to a fire inside yeah, the pool. Like, it's pretty much one of the design elements. Right, so, <laughs> please, please, please take a photo of that place when you can. Of just like show people this, and I'll, I'll definitely I'll I'll repost it on my Instagram page too. Because like when I see that, I'm like th- that that's living life. Like why are you <laughs> traveling when you can just sit there all day and I just be like, that's what I want. Is it, I would, that is actually it a is pretty is great. I would. Like, so it's a really, it's called, I'm kind of new to Phoenix, yeah. so this is a new term to me. They call them spools. Spools, okay, it's a spa pool. I'm, exactly, it's a spa pool. So it's small. It's like 11 by 17, which means I can actually heat it up to spa temperature in the wintertime. Yep. Uh, and it's small enough that I can heat it up and it doesn't, it's not very expensive and I can maintain it really easily. And it was built to look like an Italian fountain instead of a weird old kidney bean from the 1960s. And it's really, really small. So does it have jets and stuff or? Yep. Yep. It has jets around the outside and nice little tail. It was like my one little splurge thing that I, it was the best money I ever spent, even though it was expensive. I, I'm in love with it. I've never owned a pool in my entire life. It is my only pool I've ever owned. And, uh, so next time you have you on the show, you got to You definitely got to That's got to be a backdrop. I'm going to podcast from the pool. Podcast from the pool. It would be the best thing ever. (laughs) I don't know if anybody Uh, wants to see me podcasting from the pool. Just fireplace behind swimming pool. Hey, I just gotta go. I gotta go somewhere real quick. Swim out. (laughs) <laughs> Goodbye. There you go. Done. Excuse me, you have to grab a towel. Yeah. I just feel like that podcast can get so awkward so It'll fast. Be hilarious, but like, who has ever podcasted in a pool before? Nobody. Oh, okay. I'm in. Let's do it. All right, guys. <laughs> just give me time. It's super cold. I got to heat the up. pool up. <laughs> well, guys, um, it was great. Thank you, Cocktail Mavens. I know it's the last minute. Thank you so much for uh, being on the show. Guys, as you know, um, feel free to comment, and we'll put the links of the cocktails that you put down below. I, they sounded great, and I got to look them up, so... Can't wait for that. And um, yeah, again, this is the Whiskey Untitled. I am Drink Caveman. It's Lisa over there. Cocktail Maven. What's the website? Is it cocktailmaven.com? Cocktailmavenaz.com. And then The Luscious Life as well. She co-hosts. So check that out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, adulting. Good adulting. Okay, not, not, good not adulting. the, not That's the right. other one. And uh, <laughs> yeah, again, thank you guys and have a good one. Take care. And uh, oh, and FYI. This will be our last show for 2017. We'll be back in 2018. Fun, joy, and we're going to be definitely trying some of her cocktails. Yay! Bye. Thanks for having me on the show. It was super Thank fun. Thank you. Take care, guys. See ya. Bye.